Today, I've got a nice infinite sum for you. So we're going to calculate a closed value for the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n times n squared. But before we get started, I'd like to point out that there are two related sums that we kind of know the value of already. And that is the sum of the reciprocal of the squares is pi squared over 6. That's the famous Basel problem. I actually have a couple of derivations of this identity on the channel that you might want to check out. And the other one is the sum uh, as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n is just the number 1. And that's because this is a simple geometric series. So since we know these two, it seems like it maybe shouldn't be too hard to get at the value of this seemingly related series, but as we'll see, it's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so the first thing that I'll do is I'll split this up a little bit. So I'm going to write this as the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n times 1 over n times x to the n, where I've evaluated that x to the n from zero to one half. So if I plug in zero, I clearly get zero. If I plug in one half, I get one over two to the n. So that gives me exactly what I started with. But I like to think of this as like a zeroth integral. So I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to transform it to a single integral. And that's just by taking the derivative of this and then instead of evaluation, we're integrating over that interval. Okay, so anyway, what we have is the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of 1 over n. Taking the derivative of this will cancel the n in the denominator, and that'll leave us with the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n minus 1 dx. So we have something like that. And next up, we're going to change the order of summation and integration, which is OK in this case by the dominated convergence theorem. So that allows us to write this as the integral from 0 to 1 half of the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of x to the n minus 1 over n dx. Great. So again, what I've done there is just change the order of summation and integration. And now I'm going to notice that this was pretty effective at removing one of the n's from the denominator. So perhaps I can change this from a single integral to a double integral and remove the other n from the denominator and we'll be in good shape. And in fact, I can, but I need a preparatory step. So I'm going to write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x. And then I'll have the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n times y to the n, where I evaluate that from 0 to x dx. So I put this 1 over x here. So when I evaluate this y at x, I get x to the n, but the 1 over x cancels it down to x to the n minus 1. So it's exactly what we have in the previous step. OK, but now I'll apply the fundamental theorem of calculus again, and that will allow me to change this inner zeroth integral to a single integral or the entire single integral to a double integral. So that'll give me the integral from 0 to half, the integral from 0 to x of 1 over x times the sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of Let's see, we have y to the n minus 1 and then dy dx. So we're left some, with something like that. But now let's notice that I've got a geometric series in here. This sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of y to the n minus 1 has a nice closed form of 1 over 1 minus y. So let's write that out. So this is going to give us the integral from 0 to half, and then the integral from 0 to x of 1 over x, 1 over 1 minus y, dy, dx. So we're left with something like that. And now I'm going to do one of my favorite tricks, which is to multiply by 1. But the version of 1 I'll multiply by is 1 half times 2. In other words, 1 half times this integral added to itself. So let's do that. So this is going to be equal to 1 half. And like I said, this integral added to itself. So we have the integral from 0 to half, the integral from 0 to x, 1 over x, 1 over 1 minus y, 
dy dx. And then for the second version of this integral, I'll actually change the order of integration, which is allowed here by Fubini's theorem. So that'll give me the integral from zero to a half, and then the integral from y to one half of one over x times one over one minus y, and now it's dx dy because we've changed the order of integration. And now let's sketch a picture of how we know that that's the appropriate change in order of integration. So we'll look at our original thing, which has x values going between 0 and 1 half, and y values going between 0 and y equals x. So that means we need the line y equals x on the board, so that would be that diagonal line right there, and then down here would be like the x coordinate 1 half. That means the coordinate of this point up here is half half, and this shaded region is our region of integration. Okay, so now if we want to change that, so we're integrating the x portion first, notice that the smallest x can be is x equals y, whereas the largest x can be is x equals one half. And then again, we're integrating y from zero to one half. So that's why we have that as our new bounds of integration. Okay, nice. So now let's bring this expression up here and then we'll finish it off. So this is where we left ourselves. We've got our goal sum as one half times the sum of the two following double integrals. And now we can evaluate these inner integrals in both of these cases. That's not too bad. So that's gonna give us one half and then we'll have the integral from zero to a half. Then here we're integrating with respect to y so that's going to give us minus natural log of 1 minus y. So we've got minus natural log of 1 minus y over x, and then we're evaluating from y equals 0 up to y equals x. Okay, so that's the inner integral here, and then we have dx at the end. And then here we have plus the integral from 0 to 1, and then that'll be natural log of x over 1 minus y. We're evaluating from x equals y up to x equals 1 half. And then we have our dy integral. Okay, so now let's plug those bounds in. So that'll leave us with a half. And then we'll have the integral from 0 to a half. So plugging in y equals x will give us negative natural log of 1 minus x over x. Plugging in y equals zero will give us natural log of one, which is zero, so that's good. So that's done. Now let's see what we have over here. So this is gonna be plus the integral from zero to a half. We have the natural log of a half minus the natural log of y over one minus y dy. Okay, nice. Now I'm gonna make a substitution here in this second integral. I'm gonna set y equal to one minus x. So here we're reusing our variable x from above, but this is a new x. So that's, this means that x is equal to one minus y, and it means that dx is equal to minus dy, or dy is equal to minus dx. Okay, so let's see what that'll leave us with. So bringing down, we have the integral, or one half, then the integral from zero to a half of minus natural log of one minus x over x dx. And then quickly let's notice how the bounds of integration change. So if x is equal to zero, that means that y is equal to one. And if x is equal to a half, that means that y is equal to a half. So that's how the bounds of integration will change. So let's see, let's take care of the portion of this integral that's attached to natural log of a half first, which we can bring out because that's a constant. So we have minus natural log of one half, and then the integral from one up to one half of one over x dx, where a minus sign came from this dx, which includes a minus sign built into it. But let's change this to a plus by changing the order of the bounds of integration. Okay, great. So that's from this green underlined portion. And what'll happen to this other portion, which maybe I'll underline in red? Well, after a couple of steps, that's gonna end up with minus the integral from one half up to one of the natural log of one minus x over x dx. Great. 
But notice that that can be combined with this thing that I'm underlining in brown to give us the integral from zero to one of this object, because we've got the integral from zero to a half here. We have an integral from a half to one there. So let's start the next board with those combined, as well as this middle integral. So this is where we left ourselves off. So we've got half natural log of a half, the integral from one half to one of one over x, minus half the integral from zero to one of the natural log of one minus x over x. Now we're gonna evaluate this one quickly. So notice we'll get a natural log of x evaluated at one, which is zero, evaluated at half, which will be natural log of a half, but that'll be attached to a minus sign. So that gives us minus one half, the natural log of one half quantity squared when combined with this thing out here. But notice that the natural log of a half is negative natural log of two using log rules. So we can replace this half with a two. And in this case, we do not pick up a minus sign because it is squared. Then our next step will be to expand this natural log of one minus x using tools like a geometric series. So let's do that. So that'll give us something like plus one half, and then we'll have the integral from zero to one of one over x times the sum as n goes from one up to infinity of x to the n over n dx. Great. So again, just to be careful about what's going on here, this thing that I'm boxing in purple is equivalent to this sum right here, which I'm boxing in purple by some things related to geometric series, which we've seen on the channel before. Now I can take this X and multiply it through, and that'll leave us with something that's a little easier to work with. So here we have minus half, we'll just bring this down, natural log of two squared, plus one half, and then we have the sum as n goes from one to infinity, and then one over n times the integral from zero to one of x to the n minus one dx. Great. But we've got an integral which is fairly easy to evaluate right here, which I'm boxing in orange just by the power rule. This is going to be x to the n over n evaluated from 0 to 1, which gives us 1 over n. So combining that with this 1 over n that's already out here will give us a really nice sum, which we know the value of. So this is going to be the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared which we recall from before is the famous Basel problem. That gives us pi squared over six combined with this half gives us pi squared over 12. So in the end, we have pi squared over 12 minus half and then the natural log of two all squared. And that's the final value for this sum. So I've done a bunch of other interesting infinite sums on the channel. There should be one on the screen right now if you want to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.